What's up everybody? Welcome back to the channel. Dickie Does Audio here. Hey, I wanted to start a, a series of videos on my home theater uh, build that I've done myself in the last couple of years. So I want to do a, a tour of my theater and try to show you guys exactly what I have, the equipment that I'm using, and uh, things that I need to do still, things that I want to do that can be better. And, um, you know, hopefully if anything, maybe you guys can learn something from whatever I've done, you know, some from some of my mistakes, because trust me, there was plenty of them. Um, so if you're interested in, you know, home theater, anything like that, hit the subscribe button and uh, follow me in this series as I try to upgrade my, my theater. Now, th this video, I wasn't necessarily ready to do this video, but I thought, you know what, there's no better time than now to do it because we have, you know, a foot of snow on the ground here where I'm from. And if I didn't do this video, it seems like I probably would have taken forever to actually finish all this stuff. So this kind of makes me hold myself accountable for the things that I want to get done. And uh, so, like I said, hopefully, if, you know, if this is interesting to you or whatever, then just follow me on this journey and see whatever I got done and, and uh, check out what I'm going to do. So we'll start from here and I will flip the camera around and... Okay, so as soon as you come down my, my steps into my room, this is the view that you get, which right now, like I said, I wasn't quite ready for this video, but it is what it is. Let's go ahead and do it and get it done, and that way that I can start doing the things that I want to do that need to be done in my room. Um, right here, I have a Eclipse R115, and back over there is the Dayton Ultimax Ultra build that I did. I uh, did a video on that. If you're interested in something like that, check that video out. Uh, these are all Ultimax 15s that I've taken out of some of the, the boxes that I built to try and finish those boxes and make them a little nicer than what they are. Um, the JBL Studio 530s. I don't know why they look so dusty on this. <laughs> Maybe they are. <laughs> um, but the, the Studio 530s, I brought them down here just to try to give them a a listen in like the uh, the home theater environment and they do pretty damn well um, here's the uh, the Ultimax ultra build and what this is this is kind of just uh, I got some um, rocks all safe and sound that I've been using trying to make some acoustic panels to put behind my screen to try to uh, dampen the wall I guess you could say back there but anyway so a couple candy machines that I've bought um, secondhand Cleaned them out once or twice, but I'm still just, I don't know why, still skeptical to really put anything in them. Uh, eventually, I'm sure I will. I, I bought them for my grandkids, so I'll clean them up a couple more times and make sure that they're sterilized really well. And then I'll put some, you know, gumballs and things like that in there. It's just something nice to have for the, the grandkids when they come over. Um, so also, when you first walk down, turn to the left. Here's my little bathroom that I have in here, and this is one of those projects that I still need to finish. That it's been like this for a year and a half, and I just haven't finished it yet. Um, it's ba it, it just really needs to be painted. Um, you know, I, I went ahead and I started doing some things that probably didn't need to be done just yet. You know, by hanging the pictures on the walls and things like that. But um, when I put this tile in, if anybody's got a small area that they're looking to put tile in this snap stone tile is really neat man this stuff's got it it's got its own plastic tray that it sits in and its own spacer so when you when you lay it down all you have to do is just snap it into place and then run your grout through the grout lines and you get perfect grout lines so uh, this was actually pretty pretty simple to lay, and like I said, it, it's kind of neat. I wouldn't personally do this in a big area because it was kind of expensive, but if you have a small room that you want to put some tile in, definitely well worth it. It's a big time saver. Um, we put just some hardwood floors down here. They're, they're not real wood. It's a laminate floor with like an eighth of an inch of real wood on the top of it, I believe is what it is. Um, okay, back here I have a, a QRD diffuser that I built and you can kind of see the light shining through it because I 
I built it the exact dimensions so that it would fit in a window sill that I have right here. I was trying to basically just figure out a way to, to block that window off. And this is what I came up with. This is, so it, it'll... It'll uh, diffuse the sound from 553 hertz up to 2260. Um, I there, there's a, um, a QRD diffuser calculator online, and um, you can you can build it to the size that you want and figure out how deep of the uh, or, or how low the hertz that you want it to to diffuse. I wanted to try to get as low as I could to try to get down to uh, some of the, the voices so that the voices will be scattered in my room a little bit better. Um, so, but yeah, that's that's another thing. And, and and this is one of the things that I need to, to work on to do better because whenever I built this, I was kind of in a hurry and it shows, you know, the uh, the wood that I put in there. Whenever I put it, whenever I was outside building this thing, it actually didn't look bad. And then whenever I got in the house, it's like, man, there's all kinds of, you know, cracks and crevices and things that were the, the wood has just kind of, uh, I want to say expanded and retracted and now it's just kind of bowed and whatnot. So I, I need to use a, a better, thicker wood, I guess, to hopefully keep the, the, uh, the wood from bending and bowing like that. So it'd stay straight. Um, either that or try to put some kind of spacers in there to try to hold every column um, in place, that actually might, might not be a bad idea. Um, over here on the corners, I'm thinking about either some more diffusion or an actual absorption panel. Uh, this is one of my favorite movies. I, you know, I mean, I, I grew up in the, you know, mid nineties. And, uh, so th this was one of my favorite movies of all time. This and, and major league, a couple other really good eighties, nineties movies. Um, let's see, my projector, the BenQ 1085, and this for an entry-level projector is a phenomenal projector in my opinion. Um, it has very, very good colors to it. Um, just the, the brightness, every, everything to me, you know, because I've only really seen entry-level projectors, but to me, this thing, it, it does a freaking excellent job, especially for, you know, just me and my wife coming down here and uh, watching movies. You know, we really enjoy it. Um, something else right here too that that I I'm gonna do a video on these, which these are my in ceiling speakers up there. If you can you can see the uh, the grill cl cover cloth, whatever you want to call it. Um, and so what I did was I was able to I, I bought some Kef CI 160s for all of my in wall in ceiling speakers and. I, I got them for a really good deal. You know, whenever I looked at the prices now, they're they're pretty expensive. And I only paid 50 bucks a piece for them on eBay. And they were brand new in the box, still in the plastic, everything. You know, so I got a steal on them. And I, my seating is probably about a foot or two in front of them. And I wanted the the ceiling speakers to, you know hit me. I wanted them to face directly at me. So I was, you know, right in the center of the sweet spot. I didn't want to sit off axis to them at all. So I recessed them and angled them up in the ceiling. And I, I got a video coming out on, on what I did with that. I think it's pretty cool. You know, it's just, it, if, if somebody else does it, you know, to each his own. But um, right here, something that's got to get changed in here. You can see the cords to my projector. I have to kind of wrap them around the, the mount because this was one of the things whenever I built this room, I, I wasn't sure. I didn't know exactly where to put all this stuff. I just thought, hey, you know what? There's an outlet up there. I, if I put an outlet, then that's great. You know, I, I I got access to an outlet for my projector. Well, it would have been much better if it was over here towards the center and or actually even in the ceiling, but I don't think I'm going to be able to get it in the ceiling because then I have to tear a lot of stuff out. But even if I just move both of these over, you know, a foot, foot and a half, just to get them right in front of the projector so that the wire I can run maybe up on the ceiling and then down into the outlet, that would look a lot better. Um, so let's see here, let's shut this bathroom door. And this is another diffuser panel acoustic treatment, whatever you want to call it, that I have down here. It's a, it's a half circle. Uh, they, they still call them diffusers. I went to Lowe's 
and I bought a um, cardboard concrete tube that you would set in the ground for, um, you know, to hold your, your concrete pillars up for building decks and things like that. And so what I did is I cut it right in half and put some fabric on top on the, you know, covered it with fabric. And basically that's it. It's just, it's a hard surface that scatters sound, uh, from back here. The, uh, the rear surrounds that I have back here, I forgot about these, but the rear surrounds that I have back here, they're actually dipoles, I believe, and they're KEF TDM, the THX series from KEF, and they're the 34DS. These are some sweet-ass um, home theater speakers, but they're, they're not being used right now, and there's a hole in the wall behind them, so that's why they're still there, um, so, which is kind of like with this right here. This is a it's a coax that whenever i first built this room like i said i didn't know everything about home theater by any means and still don't to this day but what i did is i knew that i could use an rg6 line or a coax line as a subwoofer cable and i knew that i wanted to put a subwoofer in the rear of my room so i ran a subwoofer cable all the way in in the wall all the way through there and all the way around the front all the way to the closet space back behind where my rack is and I actually just used this the other day and because I was recalibrating with uh, REW and the mini DSP and doing all that stuff and whatnot and so yeah it, that's one of the things I, I still have yet to um to finish I need to put a wall plate on there to try to neaten that up make it a little nicer um let's see I don't know if I can get this cover off here right now. I'll get this cover off here in a second and show you guys the uh, the the Kef M wall speakers. These speakers are fantastic. They they really do have a uh, a really wide dispersed sound, which is what you would want from your your surround speakers. Just my my thought, I guess, my opinion. Uh, my acoustic panels. These are I bought these off of Facebook Marketplace. And a guy was selling them. He he got them from a, a local high school. And he basically had an entire garage full of them. And I, I bought them off of them for $8 a panel. They're professional grade um, acoustic panels. You know, the, uh, the brand is called Soundbreak Acoustic Panels. I looked it up, didn't see a whole lot on them. But they're actually pretty cool. They're just, they're, they're metal. They have a... Uh, the, the metal grill right here is kind of like what you would see on a um, on, on a speaker with a metal grill. Martin Logan has that metal grill. And uh, so they're, they're pretty cool. But um, over here, I have the, the same thing. I got two more panels over there. Uh, eventually, I will have some GIK uh, combo panels. Ceiling speakers. And... You know, once again, here's some another project that I need to do. I need to finish this and uh, paint these so that they don't look like shit. Um, this one over here is not quite as bad, but it, it still needs to be painted. Um, here's some more panels that I put up just on the ceiling. And in my room, um, I don't necessarily need the uh, the panels on the, on the ceiling. But when I was using my microphone with rew you can kind of take the microphone around uh just run a, a like a pink noise or something through your your microphone and through your subwoofers and you can take the microphone and hold it up in the corners and you can see where bass is excessive and if you have an excessive amount of bass in that one area then you kind of want to trap it so that it's you know, you can get your waterfall and your decay times down a little bit so that bass just isn't ringing in your room and you get a, a quicker, faster bass response um, and just the overall sound will be better. And so that's why I put these these panels up here. Um, they're, they're not quite thick enough for a, a bass trap, but they're definitely doing what I'm asking them to do up here, which is uh, just kind of holding some of the, the echo and the sound down up here so um okay now over here to my rack before i get up to the front speakers but um i'm running the crown 1002 
for my center channel and my butt kickers. And I run, I run the Crown 1502 for my left and right speakers. And I run a Xbox One X for, you know, Blu-ray, movies, just all, all that stuff, you know. Um, all of my apps and everything are on that. I was using this uh, Samsung Blu-ray player, which is actually, it was... It wasn't very expensive, but it did a pretty damn good job um, until I thought that I could upgrade to 4K and my um, my projector doesn't support 4K, so I couldn't necessarily do it, but it's all right. You know, the, the Xbox One X does a pretty good job of everything that, it, that I need it to do, so I'm quite happy with it. Um, and then my receiver is the Denon uh, AVR6400 really like this thing whenever i first got it um it, it was one of those things that it's like you know you the expectations might have been a little too high but as i've grown or I, I guess as i've had this longer and it's kind of grown on me more this is by far my favorite receiver that i've ever had um you know it's a, it's an 11 channel receiver um without any extra amps you don't need any extra amps yourself to uh, get the 11 channels. It has 11 onboard amplifiers, and so that's pretty cool. So anything you know, and that's good enough for me. I, I yeah, my speakers that I'm using. I did a video on these, and uh, you know, I I kind of explained, or I I feel like I kind of went over how how much I like these speakers. But these are my probably my best speaker that I have, especially for home theater. Um, the Miller and Chrysler S5000 THX series. These speakers are phenomenal for home theater and music. All right, so uh, we will. I'm going to show you guys what's behind the screen. Uh, behind the screen is uh, pretty cool in my opinion. I forgot to mention that my screen is put on hinges up in the ceiling because it's a DIY screen with uh, Seymour screen fabric it's the uh the xd and so i built my own screen and i put it on hinges that way that i could actually just uh lift it up and i can hook it on chains up here i'll get into a little more of that in just a second all right so here's what i'm running behind my screen which is a dual Dayton Ultimax 18 that I built it's it's a huge box um, here's another subwoofer that I built you can't see it because I put it on some wood it's uh, it's actually a down firing subwoofer now it's not active it's just using well hold on I take that back it is active it's an active center speaker stand is exactly what it is um, so this right here is a CSS 15 inch subwoofer driver that actually came out of this box, a birch box. I think it's full three quarter or one inch thick birch. And uh, so this thing doesn't vibrate. It's a, it's a nice box, it's nice heavy. Yeah, that's box. what it is. And so this thing gets down. Um, so, but let's see here. These right here, th this is just a, a couple things like some boxes that I have that I keep for my um, just wires and, and things like that that it's basically it and honestly it should be trash but i'm kind of a hoarder when it comes to this stuff i like to keep it around because you never know when you're going to need an extra hdmi cord or or you know five feet of wire <laughs> so but anyway um so there there's what i got behind my screen which is three ultimax 18s and I, I got something in the works right now that I think will be pretty special as long as nothing falls through. Um, in my opinion, it, it would put my front stage up there with uh, a lot of these other guys, you know, with, with uh, the things that they have. I think that um, what I have in the works could be um, output wise it could be pretty pretty massive so it, it's just something that i got into works and hopefully that'll be that'll happen in a couple weeks so like i said you know if uh if you want to check that out i'm going to try to make this a series and uh you know video after video of the upgrades and things that i'm doing like that 
So, uh, all right. So now let's go ahead and and uh, you know I, I want to check. I want you guys to check out my screen. Um, here is the back of it. The way that I built this screen, um, I forty put forty fives on all the corners. I built. I think it's a it's an oak wood. I'm not sure, um, but. And then I just took the, the screen and you just pull it tight and you just, I stapled it, you know, every two inches or so there's a staple and you just work your way from the middle all the way out to each corner. And, uh, I put these braces down the, the back of it too. And this is how the screen is connected to the, um, to the ceiling on the hinges. So, uh, you know, the, the Seymour acoustically transparent screen material, this stuff is freaking phenomenal, man. Um, you, you always hear people tell stories of, you know, you, you need your, your front three speakers to all be the same and, and you need them to all be on the same plane. You need to have that middle speaker uh, that right at the same height, blah, blah, blah. It's the truth. You know, whenever you figure that out, and, or not, I ain't going to say figure it out, but if you ever have the opportunity to do that and put your three speakers on the the same level and have your the exact same speaker behind your screen it's a game changer man it really is um so okay I, i'm going to take you guys now back behind the uh behind my my rack and show you some of my the amps that i got that i'm using for my subwoofers okay so here's what the back of my rack looks like um my wiring is definitely not on the professional level, but it serves a purpose in a sense that it keeps everything out of the way back here. Um, so yeah, that's it's like I said, it's definitely not not on par with you know some of the uh, the professionals that I've seen, and that's fine because I'm not a pro, <laughs> not by the long shot. So, um, but right here, this is a, a Behringer, um, NU four, 6,000 that runs the, um, I'm trying to think which one this runs. This runs the subwoofer far on my front right corner and in the back of the room, the 18 in the back of the room. This one right here runs the dual 18 inch box. And there's my two mini DSP two by four HDs. I just have those taped together and yeah so but then this uh the inuke 6000 right here with the, the dsp on it is actually not in use right now um i don't have enough subs active for me to use that right now i, I will more than likely use it again depending on uh what I have, what I have in the works, you know, if, if what I have in the works, you know, um, comes through, then, uh, yeah, that amp would be used and we're talking some serious, serious output that I should have, uh, in, in the, the near future. And so, um, just hoping that what I have in the works doesn't fall through. Um, so, but I, I want to show you guys a, a couple, a, a demo or two. Okay, so that's going to do it for this episode. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope you guys will, you know, stick around and uh, follow this series because there is quite a few upgrades that I want to do, quite a few things that need to be done to this room. And uh, so until next time, thanks.